softwares and this video is a collaboration with programming knowledge. In this video, we'll talk about how we can update our to-do entity and also update our database so that we can uh, know how do we handle situations where we have to update the database, add a column, or remove a column or also make any changes in the database and how uh, the database changes should reflect our code and the entity changes. So. Uh, first, let's get a recap of what we had done in the previous videos. So we have our to-do API. So we have the to-do service, we have the repository, we have the controller, and we have the entity. Now, uh, the entity had ID, name, summary, description. So this is the four attributes which our uh, to-do entity has. And this was a controlled by our cut repository to make sure that we don't write any native SQL queries. And we talked about this in detail in our previous video. Uh, apart from this, we also have our service which controls all the business logic for our application, which is uh, pretty much CRUD, so which is create, update, delete, nothing fancy here. And next we have a controller, which basically handles all of our API endpoints. So slash to do, slash to do ID, uh, and the put, post, delete uh, requests of that sort. Now, all of this was initially uh, handled using an in-memory database, which was basically a list, uh, a simple Java list. Uh, then we moved on to Apache Derby, which was an in, which was an embedded database uh, inside Spring Boot. And we were able to actually eliminate the list code using that. And after that, uh, in our most recent videos, what we did was we had a, an external database, which was MySQL. And we were able to connect MySQL to our database using the application.properties file. So we had this little file which had all the URL, username, password and the properties which are required for uh, a database to be connected to Spring Boot. So now in this video, we'll actually update or change our structure of our data so that, you know, we uh, can see how, what places do we need to change so that, you know, these changes can be fitted into our application seamlessly. So the first change, the first thing which we need is that, uh, let's say, uh, I want to make this to-do API, uh, to -do API uh, access or being able to be used collaboratively. So suppose I have a to-do list and I want to send that to a, uh, a friend of mine and uh, I send that to a couple of friends. Uh, all of us collaborate to work to solve or to finish that to-do list and uh, there should be an author of all of that to-do list, right? So let's add an author to our entity. So we have string author. And let's make our changes inside our constructor. So we need to add author here, add an author here as well. And the next thing which we need to do is make getters and setters for this. So we need to do a public string get author, which returns author. And now we need a setter, so public void set author. And all this does is instantiates our author. So pretty straightforward, nothing complicated as of now. We just uh, added the author attribute to our to-do entity. So uh, what's the problem here? Yeah, sorry, string author. So we just added the author to our to-do entity, nothing different, nothing complicated here. And uh, as you can see, we don't have uh, any other changes to be made. So if you see the controller, uh, we're not explicitly accessing uh, the to-do object and the attributes inside them. So here we just uh, handle the to-do object as it is. So the object inside consists of all these attributes. So nothing explicitly handled in the controller nothing in the repository as well. We just have the entire object and the integer, which is the ID. And for to-do service, we also have nothing explicitly being handled. So only change we had to make was inside here and we are good to go. So this is the change which we had made from the core or the API side. And now we need to make the same change in the database, right? So open uh, MySQL workbench and make sure that you're connected to your root and have the to-do DB ready in your schema. So now we need to alter the table to add that column, right? So we do use to do db so that we'll be using the to do db database and let's write the query. So it's alter table 
to do and add author which is going to be a var char of 64 yeah so this is our uh, query so let's run the query now so all we are doing is altering the table to do we are adding author column of var char 64 so let's just do a run and let's refresh our schema let's go inside tables to do columns and as you can see we have our author ready so now that we have an author ready all we have to do is basically run uh, our function uh, run our uh, api so let's run it right now We have initialized our entities, we have mapped the URLs here, and our API is started. So let's go to Postman and let's do a get first. So let's just do a small get and see what we already have inside. So I'm doing a get and let's see what we already have. So first we have just one here, we just have a to do of task two with author null so we so the author it has been added now uh, let's do a post and have a body uh, let's do an id 3 uh, task also 3 summary 3 and the author is going to be me so ronak yes and let's just do a small post and see if that works so the status is 200 okay so i think we executed that do let's do a get and see what happens so we do a get and it is send and uh, yeah as you can see we have added the author as one of us so that is how we actually make changes to our database and also our rest api so first you need to make the appropriate changes inside your Spring Boot application and then uh, once that is done you can uh, make changes to your uh, database so Usually you make the changes to your database uh, to your Spring Boot application first because suppose you're working uh, with a lot of a lot of people in your team and everybody in your team is working on the same code on the same database as well. So if somebody is trying out a new feature, then the database is currently being in used. So if you make a new column and then uh, with the, uh, alter the database and add a new column and then start working on your code, somebody who is working on a different uh, feature will not be able to actually uh, access your database right because you know you have a new column which the person does not know anything about because it's a different feature altogether so uh, what my suggestion is that first work on the code uh, make sure that the code is uh, up to the point uh, where you're confident that you, know, you can actually uh, ch make change your database now and once you're confident then make the change your database and just let everybody know that you know uh, i have made this change in database and uh, you need to use this so and so and so and keep working so so that was all for this video. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.